All right, so here we are with a little update. We've got our Dowsett Classic car from England. Uh, this is their Comet model. Dowsett's a small custom car company that's owned by Ant Anstead, kind of a friend of the shop. So he's actually been in here helping us with this. That's and this is, um, yeah, do you know what? It's, um, it's really exciting. I, uh, you know, it's a pretty car. There's a lot of heart and dedication and years that have gone into making it. This will be the first electric comet on the planet. First car like this, yeah. And we've got the small Tesla drive unit already fabricated into the rear and they're moving towards the front of the car with the battery pack. So we just want to give you an update on the car. We're going to show you what we did in the rear of the car and the current status of it and what we're doing with the battery pack and what the next steps are. We'll talk to Johnny, do some questions and uh, kind of get into the technical details. So it seems like we have a lot of room up here, but we've got a lot of equipment, a lot of components that we're going to put up. Right. Um, there's 15 modules total that we're putting in this thing. Now when you say modules, you're talking about the battery modules, Tesla modules from the Tesla yeah. modules. Right. And is, right. And is that considered a full pack? Almost. There's 16 total, but uh, we're doing one less because we have so little room in this car. Um, so we're going to end up with a lower pack down here that has four modules, an upper pack here with eight. And then in the back next to the motor, there's going to be another three. And that, uh, the way it's distributed, we'll be able to balance this car out pretty well. Um, and then we have to get all the cooling system in here too for the battery modules and the motor. And we actually have two coolers here that are two separate systems. Uh, there will be two pumps, um, two reservoir tanks and everything else to um, keep the motor and the battery Cool. So motor inverter package has a separate cooling system from the charging system and the battery cooling. Right. Right. Yep. And we're doing that just uh, because we need the extra cooling because this thing's going to be probably driven pretty dip, pretty yeah. hard. Yeah. We so, hope to see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we can get all the cooling we can. Okay. We can get on this thing. And so that's where we're going to fill out the rest of the you know formerly known as the engine bay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All so, right. Okay. It'll look pretty neat up here with all that stuff. Yeah. Let's continue on to other parts. Yep. So the interior of the car is completely gutted. Yep. All the paneling's taken out now. And you guys actually had Ant in here the other day helping you rip the floor out. With the sawzall. Right. And so <laughs> what was the original floor? Was that fiberglass? Yeah, it was all fiberglass. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all bonded to the frame rails here. Right. Uh, so we actually had to cut all of this out right. to give us um the room for the battery pack and we originally were going to put modules in here as well but we didn't end up doing that um because i was able to get everything in the center which is better for weight uh distribution so um right and it allows the passengers to sit a little lower in the car correct? that too yeah, yeah. yeah. right and right. uh it's nice because we were able to get a flat pan on this car um originally it was going to have some other uh, protrusions going a little bit too low so we were able to figure out how to get the uh, battery modules all above this plane right and uh, get a nice smooth pan on the bottom right. and now we're also completely sealed yeah we're completely sealed but it's, the battery box is also sealed as well yep. coming in from the top exactly right yeah yeah so, and um, I think going from the fiberglass to the aluminum we've probably improved the torsional flex a little bit in the vehicle yeah a little bit I mean it yeah. Adding this actually added a lot of structure um, because it's panel bonded and it's riveted and it's sealed all along here. So, I mean, it, it really right. made this thing pretty right. stiff. And uh, I did notice the pedals, they seem to be on the wrong side of the vehicle. Yeah, it's because, uh, this, <laughs> Interesting. Is, this is from the other side of the planet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so this is a right-hand drive car. So a little interesting for us. We have to work looking in a mirror, mm -hmm. but uh, that works. So <laughs> let's go look at the uh, business end. Yeah. 
So we're really just catching up with you now at this point because you've been working on this for several weeks now. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a very unique rear suspension. It mimics a solid axle, a live axle. Right. But it's actually a day de own. Yep. It allows a chassis mounted third member. Yep. And I think that's the, the stock configuration of this car. They have a, a differential mounted to the chassis. Right. Uh, so we use that same structure, right? Yep. Uh, you fabricated a subframe for the small Tesla motor. And now the motor is hard mounted to that subframe, right? It is, yeah. And then we have the subframe soft mounted to the chassis. Yep. Right. And originally Tesla has this motor um, mounted. It's, it actually uses this motor as the structure, uh, or as, as the frame um, inside of their car on the front, front of the Tesla. Right. But with this, it's a, it's a subframe that actually adds structure to the motor and it puts all the stress on these points here and here, um, so it actually makes this whole thing a heck of a lot stronger. Right. Now this is a front motor from a Model S, so it's put in at an angle, so even though it's sitting on a 45 degree angle now, that's the way it goes. That's its natural yeah. orientation in the front of the Model S. Right, right. and it worked out perfectly for Dave Yellen just because right. it is tilted up. So even though so, in a lot of our other applications we're using the rear motor, this one actually uh, was better Better, better suited fitment, for it. Yeah, better suited for the front. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, and then uh, I know we did some SolidWorks work and sent uh, off some parts to the spline factory for the the hubs. Now those are old school. Jack those are uh, Jaguar hubs. Yeah. Right. Yep. And they had a universal joint, and we're going to uh, what we um, love the most on the Tesla motor, a Porsche 930 CV. Yep. Right. 930. Yep. Right. Right. Well, this so, is just beautiful back here, and I know you did some stuff with the suspension, the gain clearance. What did you do there? Yeah. Um, it's pretty tight it's if you look tight. at the, the coil I mean, over, especially on this side over here. I'd... There's literally not an inch to spare on this thing. We had to, I actually had to make sure I had clearance um, so much that we had to do a shorter coil spring on the shock. Right. Um, to get the coil out of the way of, of just this mounting plate. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so this whole thing's got a pretty tight deal. Right. So. The factors, factory pickups, we changed out the shocks and then modified the rear de Dion. Other than that, this is a completely stock yep. <laughs> Dowsic Comet. How they come, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it looks like we have the charge inlet over here. Yeah, I, I, God, I love the look of these old school filler caps. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep a little bit of the originality to it. Right, so. right, right. All right, so what's next? Uh, I know you have some pieces come back from the water jet or some fabrication pieces for the yep. battery. Yeah, we have the boxes back and I'm fitting them up right now mm -hmm. um, and getting everything welded up um, so that we can get all the modules installed in the, in the car. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a little bit of CAD work that I need to do to be able to mount up the batteries in the box. Mm -hmm. And then we have to figure out plumbing, figure out how to cable it. Uh, we might have to do some custom bus bars inside, which they'll get a little interesting at that yeah. point. But um, Always the custom bus bars. Yeah, it's always a custom <laughs> bus bar. <laughs> okay, so next week we'll pop in. We'll take a look at the battery box. I'm sure that will probably be in by then. And we can see, I know I saw it in the cab, and it's just yep. like a hand and glove fit. So yeah. I can't wait to see it actually in the car. And I know you test fitted it, but I didn't get out here quick enough to see right. it. Right. So. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Johnny. We'll yeah. check in with you next week and see where this is at. Cool. All right. All right.